Well, what I, I think what I was thinking while I was talking was this, this topic occurred to me because this kind of challenging of status happens constantly on the internet. And, 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 and the thing is it happens, it happens in this raw form, direct form, very personal form in DMs, right? It, it's really irritating getting DMs from someone who has not established a proper relationship with me. Just saying, do not DM me, right? And, and, the, and the, the sort of, you know, you say something online, don't at me, you know, the, the, it's like, stop intruding on my willingness to answer questions otherwise by DMing me with your stuff. When I, you do not have that status with me, people on the internet, you need to come through the proper channels so that you are actually performing properly with me before we can get to that and and the and the other thing being in chats that we've all played with a lot in we post this on YouTube with the comments we every single interaction on the internet is a constant status negotiation which has been interesting to approach the internet as a medium for art form uh, as we described with the conch episode uh, in terms of the e duchies in order to be effective at particular kinds of art modes certain kinds of status have to be rejected in order to be possible mm -hmm. you're you're trading something in order to attain status or to uh reject it i had this problem I've, i mean I've, I've i've always had this problem with people in chats um as you know where my particular behavior is seen as obnoxious i think that was one way one word which was used and uh the, i mean there have been many use many many words used to describe my behavior i'm not seen to be behaving in a proper manner towards other people in chat rooms because i cannot communicate in the way that i want to if i begin to become polite the the, the word play and the things that i like to do in that in that environment it, it wouldn't be possible in the same way well, what you, so we were calling this episode Snakes and Ladders because of the game, right? And and mm. I was also thinking of it as we're in this status game constantly. I mean, that's what the, the impro mm. um, chapter is about. He's saying, if unless actors can learn to exchange status, nothing happens. It's boring mm. as I'll get out. All drama, all theater. I mean, all, in fact, all social interactions depend upon, as you're saying, this, this, alternation of status that and just you know the most now now i can't stop touching my hair it's hilarious um or in my in my face is, is itchy and stuff and it usually is <laughs> it's quite funny right so i've had i've had hours of itchy face uh, itchy <laughs> face i've been streaming with it mm. touch 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 no but the, the the fundamental the primary fundamental status is talking is high status listening is low status mm. so if i'm talking and you're listening, I have higher status than you do. So in order for me to encourage you to talk, well, one, I need to shut up. That <laughs> there are there are actually like conversational gambits that you can make. One, I just fall silent and I'm you're listening and you're going to come in. You know, if you make little pause noises, people will be encouraged to think, oh, she's st stopping talking or um, or I, I'm you're like too it. You're too practiced at waiting for me to stop. So you're not going to interrupt me, but recognizing. Yeah. But the, the, the reason for now, I'm going to interrupt you. The reason I do that is because I don't want to miss something where you're mid thought, then I'm thinking here yeah. and formulating something in the back of it. So usually I'll wait until I have a very clear idea of what you're talking about. And then I have something to respond with as opposed to an empty response. Like I, I don't like, uh, interrupting for the sake of interrupting something when I know you're still mid idea and even doing that just then uh, gave you status anxiety a little bit yeah. yeah it's hard right well it seems pointless no but it seems pointless to have this interruptiveness just for the sake of it and now you've got me doing it <laughs> and it feels awkward <laughs> <laughs> well, because why you know why see keep going why I, keep why going doing it? it's just it's just to hear the sultry sound of my own voice that's the only reason I'm doing this right now. Well, some people do do that, right? They're literally talking simply to hear the sound of their own voice because they know <clears throat> in doing so gives them, you know, situationally, momentarily that status of being the one talking. I, I notice in class, right, people will try, you know, put their hands up to talk and literally all they want to do is make sure they're talking. Like the, in Chicago, there's a, a, a character who's always that kid 
um, who is the one that always is talking, right? That kid, there he is talking. Now, they actually, they may be trying to assume high status, which is one thing. They may just be comfortable talking. Uh, they may be autists and monologuing, so we have to be patient <laughs> um, and just like really super enthusiastic. But the, the you know, the sort of breaking from one to the other, uh, one, I've made you, unfortunately, for this episode, very highly aware of what's going on. But the, once you become aware of that, then you do recognize, I, I can't stop now. <laughs> Oh, don't keep going. no <laughs> don't don't i gotta touch my face lower it so she'll jump in oh my, my god i can't do this my, no <laughs> my nose is itchy again and i'm gonna i'm gonna do it i don't care if you want to put me as a high status i don't care I, I'm we're gonna to yes we're face. gonna both go i'm 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 lower than you i'm lower than you <laughs> it's part of the reverse limbo the race to the bottom ready. we just call this episode the race to the bottom <laughs> <laughs> we slid right down the ladder of, of of status into crawling around on the ground with the snakes and the saints and yep. the pigs in the mud <laughs> yes yes i mean but the, okay so the the funny thing about this is one obviously we're friends so we're comfortable and this is the other the other kind of thing mm. it's like Indeed, if you if you try autists out there, you're trying to find someone who will do this with you, exchange status and feel comfortable with it. Definition of friendship. If you're wondering, I'm not that made me want to cry no. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cute. That was really cute. I mean, I like dropped out of high school a bunch of times. So like when you're talking about going back to high school days and having status in high school my brain's like duh, 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 doesn't compute i think about the other uh environments where the the status exchange has happened that i've actually participated in because i didn't do the high school one very well and that would probably be in like groups of people making music where you've got you've got everyone kind of following what they're supposed to be doing and then someone will do a solo or, you know, someone's got to get louder or softer or whatever. Cause it kind of, ma it, it makes sense to me in that environment more than the actual verbal talking. You're describing with the music thing. Um, w one of the things that I've described is what we're doing when we're writing the poetry, which is, I mean, I, I, yes, I, yes. I, you know, I say it's tea time. We're writing now guys, guys, guys. Um, those of you who are listening, Drake Alchemics Act One is is drawing to a finale, right? We will have a story out for you in, in the next few months, years. I don't know that, that I I bring us all together. I'm commanding it by saying it's start time, stop time, and things like that. But then, yes. and I'm also editing it and, and correcting things. But there there is also a um, feeling of you know conducting a, a chorus that has to work. Otherwise, the music doesn't happen. There's no, there's, you know, each of the instruments has to play together with each other, but has to be its own strength. And yes, that you're describing, you know, that music, people that get to play music together, that was my great, my great sorrow in growing up that I was, you know, this pianist practicing by myself, not getting terrifically good and never being able to play with anybody else. I wanted to play with other people. I wanted to have that mm -hmm. experience of harmonizing together. And, and, I, and now I recognize it in these status exchanges where, you make a gesture and someone else picks it up and takes it and then returns it to you and you make another gesture and this is what in Johnston's description of the improv that's what it is you make a you make a um you know sort of offering of this scene right and and in improv if if someone just keeps blocking you you don't get a you don't get a drama at all but if you say yes then the story unfolds, oh, right? It's like all of these things have to sort of very delicately balance out so that the dance happens. One has to lead, one has mm -hmm. to follow, but does have to, you know, be an exchange of gestures. It's like yin, it's it's like yin yang, you know. You've got that dynamic, that spinning that only happens if you've got this this kind of contrast. Someone has to lead, someone has to follow. Well, there's no such thing as absolute equality. One. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to talk about high school now. <laughs> oh, God, now I'm going <laughs> to... You picked this movie, which I'm, I'm not even to, sure I've I'm seen. Going to have, I'm going to have a post-traumatic stress episode you, live in the stream. You will have to. <clears throat> Mel says you haven't seen Breakfast Club. We had to watch that in school. What are they doing showing you Breakfast Club in school? That's like mirror magic of, of layered of sorts. Okay. This is why you don't challenge authorities that are confident. <laughs> 
Bingo. Never. Now you. Now um, we've demonstrated it. If you were ever wondering, you come in, Gamma guys, and you challenge the Alpha. It's not going to happen. It's not going to work. The Alpha is doing something you don't no. see. And if you could see it, you wouldn't yeah. be challenging him. She sees. So yeah. I like it. And, and I, what, what's funny about all of this is, you know, I, I'm INTJ or autist or whichever. I don't, I mean, I, I like being in charge in very specific kinds of encounters and situations, such as leading my class or writing our poetry or something like that. I am actually not really that interested in being the alpha of everything, right? I have zero interest in being Dean or, mm. you know, for heaven forbid, anything higher than that. And it's, it's, you know, the, uh, I, I, I welcome being in the role that you're in typically with me, which is, you know, you're supporting someone who is, else is taking the, 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 the charge. So no, it, but the thing is to be a good supporter is actually just as important as being a good leader. Cause otherwise nothing the happens. Creative, the creative process of a conversation is destroyed without that dynamic. So we're demonstrating it very clearly now, but this is an artificial kind of uh, environment. So the hierarchy formation is different because it's not natural. It, they, they're very supervised uh, kind of hierarchy contests. So when all the kids go into the Saturday detention, they've got the teacher there who's overseeing them and saying, don't move, don't do this, you know, blah, 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 mm. laying out all of the rules. The two girls in this movie are based. I think they're good archetypes for female social sexual hierarchy, really, because you've got the you've got the the pretty rich girl who's very popular. Ken is trying to gain status by giving us these yellows. Goth, <laughs> he's buying his way, buying to, the top, his way baby. to the top. Goth girl wasn't being punished, am I right? She came to detention for fun. <laughs> Happens. Yes. Okay. So she's there for fun. That's how odd she is. She just decided to go. So their 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 willingness or unwillingness to take risks throughout the film, it it's reshuffling their status with each other all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, until they kind of uh, land in completely different positions by the end of the film. So I'm I, I, I've not seen the movie, and one of the reasons is I don't want to see the movie. <laughs> And I think it's because I'm resistant to the idea that, I mean, a lot of Hollywood does this, right? That you oh. start with one status and there's all, there's always, I mean, the, the trope in the Hollywood movie, there's someone who has a very you know, sort of proper status. And by the end of the movie, like Greece, right? They're, mm. they're, they're, oh, yeah. they're, you know, not even goth girl, they're, you know, leather, they're leather and their hair is all frizzy and oh wait. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that the 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 theater and this is also probably why I don't like Dead Poet Society for their variety of reasons for it, but one because it makes you know my job look silly. Um, that it's always the answer is always to change your status to the artist and who breaks all the boundaries and who is in fact a kind of gamma fulfillment fantasy secret king of the writers of of the show itself. That you know yes. we are stuck in this as as artists who like the thing is you and I as artists don't want this but the trope is and what Vox always called the gamma fulfillment fantasy was right you you are secretly the one who actually has all the answers and so you're going to break out of that low status that you have and everybody's going to love you by the end of it I resisted <laughs> seeing it because I don't want yet another mm -hmm. of those you know obviously drama depends on the inversions. And the, it's like we have you have in, mm. in our slides one of the the specific inversions that happens in the story that there's the man of the year Carl Reed. Oh. It's a little hidden detail. So the uh, throughout the film the janitor is there and he's cleaning up and he's watching everything and and observing them all. And um, whereas Carl the janitor he was man of the year when he was at that high school and then he ends up being the janitor. So he's gone from a position of very high status to very low, but he's very satisfied with it. Mm -hmm. He seems to be satisfied with it, not not complaining and not com and, and not particularly bitter. Very aware of. The abuse of authority of that particular teacher, mm -hmm. in that he's uh, he's taking out his frustration on the students under him. So he's he's essentially a bad he's being a bad alpha. 